Hey, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Schada and I'm working on the Micro Bootlegger Sport Strip Built Sea Kayak. Once again, I'm at the stage of the process where there's just a bunch of little things to do and a lot of watch and glue dry. I'm working on finishing up the backrests and on making the skeg. Putting glass on those backrests and laminating up some carbon fiber to cut out the skeg. I'm not sure how far I'll get, but let's get started. I'm going to put a layer of fiberglass over the front face of all of these and I, I want to get them up off my work surface so any drips don't run under and mess up the backside. So what I'm going to do is uh, just glue some scraps of wood with hot melt glue to the back here. I still have the peel ply on. I'm hoping that'll help me clean up that backside when it comes time. Just peel that off and hopefully that'll peel off most of the drips. We'll see how that works out. That'll just get glued on there like that onto each one of these. I'm going to cut a piece of glass to go over each one of these. I'm going to put it on a bit of a diagonal bias to help it wrap around some of the contours. Now I'll just wet out the glass. Same process as always. I'm slitting it to try and help it wrap around these tight corners. It may or may not work, but worth a try. Now I'll mop up the excess resin. So I realized I didn't have the microphone on when I was uh, talking through the process here. So I will try and talk you through what I did as I wet this stuff out. The first thing I did was I cut up my pieces of carbon fiber here. I've got uh, 12 layers. I'm trying to make about an eighth of an inch thick. And the way it came out, I cut uh, four widths and then cut those widths into thirds. So I have 12 pieces. I think I need about 10 to get an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to start wetting these out, I'm laying down on the piece of glass, and then I'm going to put some resin on here and spread that around. When I was cutting these out, I first pulled out a couple yarns. I, I measured out the width I needed, pulled out a couple yarns, and use that as a guide for making a long straight cut that's parallel to the yarns of the cloth. And so, I, I, like I said, I cut out four of those, and then I stacked the four together and cut those four widths into lengths. And these are nine and a half by 14 and a half, and that's based on the size of the glass I have here. I'm laying this resin on fairly liberally at this point. So once I got the pieces cut into lengths and cut into the dimension I wanted, I then made a stack. And this is a twill weave cloth. So that means each yarn goes over two, under two. And then the next yarn steps up one and goes over two, under two. And as a consequence, you get this sort of diagonal pattern that's running through the carbon fiber. In order to make this panel of carbon fiber more interesting, I then flipped over every other piece to make that diagonal pattern alternate. So when I go to uh, shape the foil shape in the skeg, I'll end up cutting through each layer and each layer will have will end up being a slightly different pattern. So it'll just make it look cool as I uh, cut into that layer. You'll be able to sort of see the contours by the change in the weave pattern. It's a subtle change, but it'll be there. And once I had all the uh, layers in order and organized, I then got these pieces of glass here and put some mold release on them. The first mold release is just to 
carnauba wax. I apply that, spread it around, and then buff it off. And I, I did that uh, two or three times on each layer on both sides. Put it on there, let it dry a little bit, then come back and uh, buff it off two or three times on each piece and uh, buffing it off after each one until I've got three coats of the release on there. Then I have this uh, spray release. I often use PVA. This, this product is a new product for me. I've used it a little bit, but not much. Um, but it's convenient. It, it comes in a spray bottle, so just spray it on and let it dry. Let the solvents flash off a little bit before uh, applying the next coat. I could have done a vacuum bag on this or even an infusion. I just didn't want to take the time to set up for that. It's a major process to set up and honestly carbon fiber is kind of overkill for a little skeg like this. But uh, it'll look cool. That's the, that's the goal here, make a cool looking skeg to mix up a little bit more resin. I'm using the same epoxy as normal. This is an MAS slow cure. It's fairly low viscosity, so it uh, penetrates through the cloth easily and doesn't matter in this case, but it is blush free. Now I'm going to warm the whole layup up. Again, lower the viscosity. Help get bubbles to flow out. Now, sandwich it between the other piece of glass. Your clamps, just clamping it tight. All right, now we'll let that cure. After the epoxy is set up for a while, I'll put a full coat on these backrests. So I've got my uh, carbon fiber here laminated up, and now it's Time to see if I can get these pieces apart. I've got a little wooden wedge here. Let's see if I can uh, force that in between the surfaces here. There it goes. All right, there's one layer of glass off. All right, there we have it. Piece of carbon fiber. This isn't the perfect layup. There are some little trapped air pockets in here. This was the bottom side. This is the top side. And, you know, again, if I'd used a, a vacuum bagging or an infusion method, I could have gotten a better layup. But for the purposes of, you know, showing you what you can do with just couple pieces of glass and a stack of carbon fiber. Um, I think this is a fine example. So here we have the backrests. The epoxy is hardened on them now. And so I'll just trim off the excess glass, knock that little stand off of there, and uh, do a little bit of cleanup. Next, I want to see if I can get this peel ply off. You know, it's pretty well held on there at this point. 
See if we can get under the edge. So you see that leaves a nice smooth surface. It's got a little texture to it. I could apply epoxy clear uh, fill coat right over this right now and make a really smooth surface. But I'm gonna end up mounting some hardware on the back of this. So I think these backrests will go nicely with the seat. The color is quite similar. Obviously some difference, but that's what makes it interesting. Now I need to put some hardware on the back of this or just some mounting points to uh, attach webbing and so forth to connect it to the boat. So my plan is to have some webbing that goes between the cheek plates which are on either side of the seat. Um, I've got a couple holes drilled in those. The webbing will go back around the back of the backrest and back to the other cheek plate. And then from the bottom of the backrest to the loop I made at the back of the combing there'll be a shock cord which adjusts the height and lets it move around a little bit. And then at the, from the top of the backrest back to that same loop will be a loop of cord. Just keeps the backrest from flipping down as you, if you drag your butt across it as you're sitting down. I will have the webbing, a cord, and a shock cord. So what I'm thinking for the webbing is just put some slots through the edge of this so the webbing can come down, go through those slots, and then come around the other side, and that'll be very secure. And this is plenty strong enough for that. So I need to cut some slots in here, then I'll make some loops to attach the line and the shock cord. I want to lay out the slots in the backrest. I'm just going to put some tape on here so I have something to write on. And I'm just going to uh, follow those accents. I'll use those as a guide for where I want to place the webbing. I'd like to have the webbing centered between those accents, which that is two and three quarters inches apart, so half of that one and three eighths. And then the um, webbing is an inch wide, but I want it a little bit bigger than that, so I'll go at uh, one and an eighth. I'll go one and a quarter, so half of that is uh, five eighths. I like to have it coming out right in the beefy part where it's still fairly beefy here. So right in here we'll say that's about three quarters from the edge. Make a mark there, make a mark here. All right, so we're gonna make it between here, and here, right on this line. And so what I'll do is just pop a bunch of holes through here and then um, square that up and make it nice. And uh, then we'll reinforce that a little bit and then start working on the strap holes. I'm just gonna work on one of these now I'll keep the other three as spares if I screw this one up or, you know, I can use them in the future and I may or may not use them in the same way as I'm using this one, putting the straps through it. So I don't want to um, do all this process to them unless I have to. So once again, I'll be using this uh, remainder from cutting out the parts as a jig just to hold things secure. And I'm just going to drill a row of holes right along there. So the edge of the last hole will be here and the edge of the first hole will be there. Now we'll just cut some of this out. So 
the webbing's going to go across here. It'll be like that. And then I'm going to have some loops, top and bottom, again, for a shock cord at the bottom and just a uh, standard cord at the top. And I think I want to make that as a one piece so I've got a lot of glue area so it can take a lot of stress. So I'll want that piece to jump over that webbing. The webbing will be going from here to there. And then the uh, loops will be attached right down the middle, something like that. This is some of the same material I cut the stems out of. And so we're going from the bottom is there, the top is there. If we put a hole in there and a bigger hole in there and then had the uh, webbing jump over it like that. And so that'll be glued onto the back and I'll round it off nice. But So let's start by drilling a couple holes. A little glass in this bracket here will add a lot of strength. Hardwood like this can sometimes be problematic to glue down. It has to rip this fiberglass off before it uh, ends up coming off. And that's, that's a tall order. So I use a utility knife to trim out the uh, glass and the holes on the bracket there. Now I'm going to clean up the slot.
So this is going to be what holds the backrest strap. It's basically just a little carbon fiber plate which will work as a clamp. Um, I put some T-nuts in behind the cheek plate. Right now I'm gluing it in with G-Flex. Gluing those T-nuts in with G-Flex. This little spacer in there is just to take care of the fact that those T-nuts stick a little bit proud of the surface of the cheek plate and I want to get a good clamping pressure on there so I just put that in and by using this uh, carbon fiber clamping strap I just make sure everything's lined up right and it's going to fit together. I just cut this little rectangle out of the same material I made the skeg with just it's a rectangle with a couple holes in it countersink the holes and that will put good pressure on the strap so the strap doesn't tend to pull out. By having two bolts there, I'll be able to get good pressure on that strap and really clamp it down in there nice. So this was a bit of a dragged out episode. I started several days ago and I've been doing sort of things along the same lines ever since. So I started out finishing off the backrest and working on the skeg. Next episode will probably be sanding, um, doing the final sanding, and then we'll be looking forward to the final finish. So if you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you're learning anything from this series, I'm still not done yet, and I'm going to be doing more stuff along the same lines in future builds. So hit subscribe, turn on notifications, all that fun stuff. If you're really into what I'm doing here, head over to Patreon and chip in a little bit for the production of these videos. Every little bit helps. I really appreciate your support. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.